Hi everyone, welcome back to another project featuring a couple of products from Spellbinders through the Arbor Garden. Carnation, a gorgeous die set, is center stage on both cards. On one of the cards, I'm using a beautiful new background die, Bamboo Trellis. This tutorial will feature the card with the single carnation. The second card with a few minor variations has been highlighted on my blog at bonniecarolee.com. The carnation die set consists of three dies. The largest petal base is a single and is cut three times. The other die has multiple petal layers of different sizes and is cut two times. The final die has two slender leaves. Again, the number of times it is die cut is etched directly on the die. I cut this one more times than suggested. This carnation was die cut from red cardstock. I'm starting off by applying some white pigment ink to the petal edges to provide some pretty highlights. I've done this for all of the petal layers except the three smallest ones. The floral arrangement will also incorporate three leafy sprigs from the Victorian Garden Foliage Die Set. These sprigs and the carnation's leaves were cut from green cardstock. Depth was added to both sets of die cuts with Distress Oxide Ink Rustic Wilderness. I'll be doing all of the shaping using Susan's Garden Ultimate Toolkit. All of the petal layers with the exception of one of the largest ones and the three small sizes will be shaped the same way. This large petal layer will be the base of the flower, so this one is shaped a little bit differently. With the flower right side up on the foam shaping mat, the ball tool is used to make little circular motions on each of the petals. For this next task, I'm using my reverse tweezers rather than the regular ones because I find it has better reach. The nose of the tweezers is placed at the base of each of the petals and then it is simply pinched upwards. For the rest of the petal layers, with the exception of the three small sizes, I'll be using the leaf tool. The leaf tool is placed right at the petal's edge so that those edges will curve downwards. When turned over to the right side, you can see striations on each of the petals giving it a more natural look. And then I'll just go ahead with my reverse tweezers again, catching the base of each of the petals and squeezing it upwards just like the previous layer. And I'm going to build this carnation as I go. So I'll bring back the base layer and using the ball tool, I'll make some circular motions in the center of each of these layers to cup them. Place a fairly good amount of adhesive in the center of the base layer and then offsetting the petals, insert the other one. And then the next few petals are going to be shaped the very same way, starting off with the leaf tool on the back of each of the petal, creating those striations. And again, I just want to emphasize to bring that leaf tool right up to that petal's edge. This will avoid the need of having to go in with tweezers afterwards and turn those tips down. And I actually didn't notice it till now, but I forgot to use my tweezers and crease the base of the petals on this layer, but at the end of the day, it is not at all noticeable. So now I'm moving on to the next smaller size of petals. And I start off by adding those striations with the leaf tool on the back of each of the petals. And then taking my tweezers and placing the nose right at the base of each petal, squeeze upwards. They are then cupped with the ball tool and then each layer is inserted, making sure that the petals are offset from the previous one. As more layers were added in, I found it helpful to use the ball tool to hold a layer in place until the glue started to set up. And now we're moving on to another smaller size of petals. This one will be the last one where the white pigment ink has been placed on the petal's edge. And the smaller the petals, the quicker they are to shape. And I'll quickly add on the striation on the back of these petal layers and flip them over, 
using my tweezers. I've switched out to my regular tweezers now and place the nose at the base of each petal and squeeze upwards. The ball tool is depressed in the center of each of these petal layers, cupping them. And I'll put these in place, making sure that I'm offsetting those petals and again using the ball tool to help push it down into the center of the flower. I can go ahead and pop that last layer in and then I'm ready to work on the three sets of tiny layers which are going to be treated a little bit differently than the rest. To create a darker center, these layers do not have the white inking on the edges. For this pair of petals, I'm going to take the tweezers and place them at the base and crease them upwards. And I'll use the ball tool to depress them. And I'm just going to take my fingers and squeeze it just a little bit to maintain a tight shape. These petal layers are going to be placed side by side in the center of the carnation. That will create a ruffled look in the middle of the flower. And I'll just use the tips of the tweezers to hold them in place until that adhesive sets up, which does not take very long. The two final sets of petals are quite small. For this second smallest one, I'm still able to use my tweezers to squeeze the base of the petals. These four last layers will be used to fill in the central portion of the flower. Wherever there are any gaps, I'll take these layers and tuck them in, holding it with my tweezers in place until the glue sets. And the two smallest ones are so small that I just squeeze those petals upwards with my fingers and then go ahead and tuck them in. With the carnation complete, I'm going to go ahead and ink up my background. I'll be applying positively saturated inks. Start off with my lightest tone of gray, which is flannel. It will be applied to the top of the card and also down the right hand side of the panel. Next, I'll move on to the mid-tone, which is called Earl. I'm working towards the area where the carnation is going to sit. Once I have the mid-tone blended out with the light tone, then I'm going to switch over to charcoal. I don't think that I mentioned that I'm working on Bristol Smooth cardstock, which is my cardstock of choice for ink blending. And I've laid down some paper towel over the panel so that I can hold it in place and avoid getting finger marks on this slow drying ink. To get a smooth blend, the ink was applied three times. The blend is achieved by overlapping one tone onto the next. Before I start assembling the card front, I'll first add a little bit of shape to the leafy sprigs from the Victorian Garden Foliage die set. I'm just using the ball tool in a circular motion on the back of those little oval leaves. And then on the right side, the ball tool is used again to depress it at the base of each of the leaves just to make them pop up. I'll adhere them first by applying some adhesive down that central stem. The carnation is going to eventually sit in the darkest part of the panel on that left hand side, so I want the sprigs to fan out from that point. I'm going to apply a good amount of adhesive to the center of the carnation. You'll have noticed that while I was assembling these main pieces, that I had the sentiment temporarily tucked in the corner. I want to make sure that I've got room for it. I've used a set called Picked Fresh Sentiments. It has been die cut from both black sheet foam and bronze glitter cardstock. This die set has a thicker font, making it very easy to stack the glitter cardstock die cuts to the foam ones. These are super easy to line up. And for the dot for the eye, I left the foam die cut in the backing, some glue on it, and then used the jewel picker to put the die cut in place. It can take a little bit longer for the adhesive to dry on foam. So while it's drying, I'm going to glue together my chrysanthemum leaves in pairs. I'll first adhere the word make, tucking it just slightly underneath the bottom right hand side of the carnation. 
I'll lay out the two words I wish right below it. To make sure that the horizontal spacing is correct, I'm going to adhere the word wish next. I want to ensure that there's a little bit of space between the top of the H and the word make. For whatever reason, I have a better chance of seeing if my sentiment is on straight if I hold my panel up. After the rest of the sentiment is adhered, I can go back to the foam and remove the dot for the letter I where I left it to dry completely. Because the adhesive was placed in the center of the carnation, it is easy to tuck in the pairs of slender leaves. And this panel is finished off with some iridescent chocolate brown pearls. Finishing touch, I'll be using Spellbinder's new 1-2 punch. This is a great little tool that does a couple of things. It rounds corners and it also creates notches. For a fun variation, I'll be rounding three of the four corners on both the panel and the black A2 size card base. I delayed adhering the card front so I wouldn't have to struggle with the punch going through three layers of cardstock. And after I've used my craft pick to help pick up those leaves, I'm going to use a paintbrush and Nouveau Glitter Drops White Blizzard and just add some shimmer to the tips of all of the leaves. When this medium dries, it is clear and super shiny. That completes this card featuring Spellbinders Carnation and Bamboo Trellis Background from the Through the Arbor Garden Collection. For details on the second card, visit my website at bonniecarolee.com. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I appreciate your visit.